presentation by uh, Luita Shan Boti. He's head product and engineering energy division at Fuji Electric India on the strategic planning of infrastructure for digital transformation. Now, uh, uh, Lohita Stan is an experienced general product manager in the electric and electronic manufacturing industry. He has a strong product management uh, background and he's skilled in business planning, sales, international sales management, uh, and solution selling. Hi, Anisha. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, so I'll start I'll sharing my screen. Just let me know if it's visible. <laughs> Um, uh, Anja, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, we can see your screen. Please okay. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lohit Ashen. I'm take, basically taking care of the product management for the energy business of Fiji Electric here in India. So today's our session is basically to discuss about the strategic planning for an infrastructure. So today, if you see, we have been uh, discussing about a lot of subjects from yesterday today, and everywhere we're talking about digital transformation. So which means we transform from a certain topology to a certain topology, right? So, and today we talk about uh, you know, moving data either in-house or into cloud movements. Today, when you're talking about a transformation from a, a normal infrastructure to a digital infrastructure, which means we are going to move data. So when you're trying to move data, okay, either you store in a cloud data or you store it in-house, but to do all these activities, there's always infrastructure behind it, right? Because without having certain infrastructure, you cannot move. So if I have to move data, I need certain aspect in terms of uh, power, in terms of power, in terms of cooling, there are some requirements required so that it helps me to move the infrastructure or move my transformation from it to a digital infrastructure. So when you do that, so today we talk about a couple of questions, like so we talk about when I when you talk about a digital transformation, okay, today I'm talking about whether it may infrastructure, because today when you talk about a certain uh, in transformation, so it is not stable, right, today, because today I'm planning for a certain infrastructure, but whether it's going to remain frame for the next three years, because I really don't know, because Sometimes what happens is today we have certain infrastructure as a, a certain requirement, and this keep on changing because uh, revolution or uh, you no know, change is constant. So today I have certain need, tomorrow my need changes. So, so today we, when I design my infrastructure, I see what is my uh, plan for the next couple of years and how do we control my cost because I'm trying to move to a different technology today. So when I do the technology, there are certain environment, whether my cost is going to up, whether my OPEX is, whether may, there'll be some impact on the OPEX, whether there'll be impact on CAPEX. So all these things we see, and we also do our analysis, right? So today, this is my infrastructure. And to grow, this is what I need. And what is my gap? Now, how do I fill my gap? These are the things what we presently see a challenge, which means we are certain demand, we are certain trend. So how to inter interrelate these two into one infrastructure? So that's what we're gonna to see today. And now if you see this slide, this system is basically we're talking about a full infrastructure from utility, from your mains till your loads. And today, when you talk about uh, uh, digital, infra, uh, digital transformation, we talk about virtualization of a server, we talk about optimizing of data storage, et cetera. This is what we have been discussing for the last two days, but this is not the forte. This is not what we're going to discuss now. What we're going to discuss is we have certain area of expertise, which is basically the electrical space, Okay, and there are some components in the mechanical space which we can help to uh, optimize. So, which means today I'm talking about right sizing of IT power, the power which is required to run your IT equipment, let it be a cloud infrastructure, let it be your in-house data centers, it requires power. And how do I size it properly? Because as I said earlier, we need to see, we need to have a uh, vision for the next three to five years, how my load is, how my infrastructure is going to scale up. So which means right sizing of power is one of the key factor. And how do I do different incorporation? I would say different technologies. How do I enable my power management techniques to improve the efficiency of my power consumption? So this is what we are going to discuss in the next couple of slides. So today, when you talk about IT power, the right sizing of IT power, okay? So we talk about a certain aspect today because this is basically the load trend. Like today, when I'm having a certain application, for example, if I take the co-working space, which has been very famous for the last couple of years. And if you see in the last two years, because of the COVID, nobody goes to office. So that I have a certain infrastructure of the UPS, right? So because my load was very dynamic, 
but I kept an a uh, higher scale of UPS system because I had certain higher infrastructure of power because to meet my requirements of the road because I do not want to keep on changing my infrastructure because I cannot keep on changing my UPS system every time. So because of that, we are having a very fixed infrastructure in terms of UPS. But when the load is not there or when the load is less, this infrastructure is not going to be helping me. So today, what we need is something called an adaptive power infrastructure. So when I talk about adaptive power infrastructure, I should be able to scale up okay i should be able to scale up or scale down my infrastructure the power infrastructure as and when required so that's the reason we started using something called as a modular ups system or a modular infrastructure i will say so the modular infrastructure gives you the flexibility for what to right sizing of your it infrastructure or it power which is required not only that it also helps you to do a lot of cost optimization in terms of operating cost. Because for example, probably I may have a four numbers of 40 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt UPS system supporting a load of 60 kVA. And today the load is only 15 percentage or 30 percentage. And at 30 percent, the efficiency says around 94 percentage. But because of this modular construction, okay, because of the modularity, there's always a possibility to increase, right? The, we make the unwanted modules to go to sleep mode so that the percentage of loading on the each UPS system increases to 40 percentage. The moment I move from 30 percent to 40 percent, I have increased the percentage of loading. The moment I increase the percentage of loading, what do I achieve? I'm controlling the cost. Now, how I'm doing the cost? Because I have an adaptive infrastructure where I'm able to size my IT power requirements exactly to its requirement. I'm not oversizing it. I'm not undersizing it. I have the right infrastructure so that now I can improve the operational efficiency of its infrastructure. And on the other hand, when you burn data, right, there is something that UPS is also giving the power. So to, to store your data, you're burning the power, which means you are generating heat. The heat is generated where? It is generated to a server. It is generated at your UPS system. It is generated everywhere in a, in a, in a data hall. So the moment I have a heat, we need to remove it, right? To remove that, what we use? We use the air conditioners. Right today, what we do is we use uh, either a water cooled chillers or air cooled chillers to, to and we have that the cooling circuit to remove the heat from the UPS room. But here, how do I help you to? Because I'm not a chiller guy, so how do I help you to improve the efficiency or reduce your? You know, how do, how do I help you to manage your power? See now, generally when you look at all the chillers, rather than running at a direct raw power, we have something called as a VFD, variable frequency drive. So when you do VFT, what is that I get? I reduce the losses because when I, when I, for example, when I operating a damper on a normal DOL connection directly, if I'm switching on a on a uh, DOL on a, uh, a directly switching on a damper on a through a direct starting method, then the power consumption is higher. Then when I use the VFD, the power consumption drops. The more the power consumption drops, I'm able to manage my power effectively. I'm really able to reduce the losses in the infrastructure, thereby we are able to you know, generate uh, or reduce the power consumption. I'm able to manage my power effectively. This is one way of controlling your power. And second thing today, when you talk about, we talk about different technologies, right? Today we talk about, if you look at, we focus more on renewable power. We've talked about solar inverters, solar power generation follow solar power, solar plant, power generation from wind energy, et cetera. So there are different powers. So today, when I look at exactly my data center or my infrastructure, I use the mains, the grid power supply, and I run all my loads based on this. Now, this is what? This is the conventional way of doing it. Now, today we also want to have my, uh, the moment I move from a, uh, to a digital, digital transformation, I also want to be sustainable sustainable i want to have an ecosystem of my infrastructure which is sustainable so what we do the future is this we have grid power and we also have the renewable power either a solar power or a wind power and we store that energy the storage can be done locally at your server or at your facility or can be remote and then you can do an energy trading but this is one of the recent way of it's an adapt it's a new technology what we are trying to adapt today is to store the energy locally and lose it and use it when uh, no when I don't have a generation probably I can store the energy during daytime and discharge it during the night or whenever there's a peak demand whenever there's a requirement is higher I can use it or alternately it can also act as a re, uh, uh, no reserve power supply for the generators you use utility power so generally what happens the moment the utility fails we switch on the generator 
right? The moment you switch on the generator, you're also emitting carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. So to avoid this, okay, you, probably sometimes the power fail is only for a few seconds or probably certain for minutes. So if I have to avoid the generator usage, we can also use the solar energy to discharge the power back into your mains power, into our grid or into our electric infrastructure when there's no, no power failure, when there's, when there's no power or when there's a power failure. So by doing this, what we are able to do, what, what, we, what we are able to do is we are able to incorporate the, uh, a new technology into the ecosystem, a sustainable, eco, uh, sustainable uh, infrastructure into your ecosystem. This is, a, this is another, one of the other way of doing a power management technique in your infrastructure. So if I have to summarize the, all the points what we discussed today, when you talk about uh, uh, no, digitalization, moving from a trans when moving from moving towards the digitalization, the infrastructure, the backend infrastructures plays a critical role in terms of uptime, okay, in terms of data availability, etc. And the moment we talk about the up back backend uh, infrastructure, we mostly talk about power and the cooling. When you talk about power, yes, we have to uh, no, do the right sizing of my electrical infrastructure so that I'm not oversizing or not I'm undersizing. And the second thing, we try to incorporate a sustainable development into my infrastructure so that I can have a, I can use different power management techniques. I can use a VFT drive. I can use a solar in, uh, solar generation. I can use an energy storage system to have an effective power management techniques. Or we can also use a different topology of construction of, of or the design, the multiple end co configurations where you, know, you can reduce the number of UPS systems in your infrastructure with the help of this ATS, okay? We go for a distributed redundancy so that the UPS efficiency can also be improved with the right infrastructure and the right power management techniques, okay? So this is on the technicality. And when, it, when I come to Fuji Electric, Fuji Electric is basically a Japan-based multinational company. We are found in 1924. And when you talk about, uh, in 1924, we started manufacturing motors, and then we started slowly into manufacturing of transformers, power generation turbines, semiconductor devices. Today, we are one of the largest manufacturer of semiconductor devices in the globe. And then we started doing some vending machines also in Japan. But today, when you look at uh, Fuji Electric globally, we talk about uh, two key parameters, energy and automation. So when I talk about energy, we talk about all the energy optimizations of the power management techniques, what we discussed earlier. And you talk about automation, we talk about factory automation, retail automation, and the social automation. And if you look at Fuji Electric in India, we have a very good experience. Okay, we have, we have our experience. We have the reach in, in, in India, we have the resources, and we have the support. So when I talk about my experience in India today, we have 35 years, more than three decades of experience in India. We have 400 plus, uh, 400,000 plus installations, and we have more than 300 customers who have more than one megawatt of my installations. And when I talk about the reach, we are present across the length and breadth of the country. We have 25 sales locations. We have 200 plus channel partners and more than 10,000 customers across the country and resources. I have four factories in India. We have 1,000 employees working for Fuji Electric here in India with the DSIR approved laboratory, r and lab. And support is always the, back, no, is the, uh, uh, the backbone of any organization. And today, when you talk about my service infrastructure, we have 80 plus service locations with more than 400 service engineers working for us across the country. And we have an in-house R&D department, as I said earlier, we have an in-house in R&D department approved by DSIR. Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. This already set up was set up in, two, in 2012. And today we, 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 have, we, have, we have probably said that a lot of technologies has been introduced in the country, has been indigenous in the country. Like we are the first guys to do indigenous design of three level technology, solar inverters, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a lot of credentials to our R&D team in the country. And all these quality certifications, factories, ISO 9001, 14001, 45001, all quality certifications are available for the factory. And when you talk about my infrastructure, yes, we are, as I said earlier, we are present across the length and breadth of the country. We have more than 400 plus service engineers with 80 plus service locations. We have an in house call center, multi language call center supporting the needs of my customers across 25 by 7 by 365 days. And the service is accessible. You can, 
it you can access from your handheld device because we also did a digital transformation from a manual because we don't do any manual uh, field service report the complete infrastructure is technology driven is technology driven which means from the call logging the call logging can be done through a whatsapp message through a chatbot uh, through a mobile applications and complete from the start uh, starting of the call to the closure of the call is an automated system and you get your uh, FSR, the field service report, no manual manual reports because thanks to the digital transformation, we use an uh, no um, uh, a digital report. The, the report comes in directly into our inbox app. And when you talk about the infrastructure and the solutions, what we offer, okay. So as an organization, yes, we have the wide portfolio of uh, uh, solutions. We talk about uh, no upstream infrastructure. We talk about these transformers. We have a company called Fuji Tesco, which is based in Thailand, where we are able to give you the full infrastructure solution for HV network. And then when you talk about the switch gears, for especially for data centers, yes, we have all the IEC certified switch gears manufactured by, by uh, Fuji SMB from Singapore. And when you talk about the man the the low voltage infrastructure, let it be UPS system, let it be uh, the price for the chiller plan, let it be active harmonic filters or STS. Yes, we do it in India. So this is all about from my side. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Anjana, to you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, for your uh, presentation. In case, uh, there are any queries i'm sure uh, the participants will get in touch with you or reach out to you at your virtual booth so thank you so much for your presentation thank you thank you